today I am talking about Bitter Lemons by Lawrence Durrell and I've put on my special book shirt because Lawrence Durrell actually wrote literature or at least he believed so many other people seem to believe it as well so this book took me an extraordinarily long time to get through and part of the fact the reason for that was the fact that it felt like it had separate sections and I didn't think they always tied together now let's talk about the writing itself it's gorgeous of course um, Gerald Gerald Durrell's How I Came Across Lawrence Durrell. I read all of the Gerald Durrell books when I was young, obsessively and over and over again. And because he mentioned his brother Lawrence always in the background writing books, I tried to move on to Lawrence Durrell when I was a teenager. I wasn't up for this particular brand of literature when I was that young. I just wasn't able to get my head around it. As an adult, I like it more. It's very descriptive, it's quite gorgeous, it's lush. It's very literature 1950s England, I suppose. And oh, let's mention 1950s for me is a specific era. I know it's thought of as modern in some circles, but I herald from classic science fiction. And my experience of people who wrote in the 1950s is that their concept of society, their social integration, their attitudes to life, those folk were not like us. They've, we've changed a lot in less than a hundred years. A 1950s author does not see things the way a 2020 person does. So this one is set on the island of Cyprus and Ger Lawrence Durrell, after having lived for a, a while elsewhere, which he doesn't go into in any great detail, moves to Cyprus because he loves the Mediterranean and because he can't afford to move to Athens. The vivid way in which he describes the island makes you almost be able to smell that almond blossom. It looks beautiful, it sounds beautiful, it's lush, it's rich, it's full of real personalities. The individual inhabitants spring to life in a most fascinating and often quirky way. I think the first person narrative which he uses gives one an excellent character to follow the story through and to follow through the story. Whether it's an actual close portrayal of the author, I have no idea. It's certainly a very close portrayal of the way he writes in other things as well. I've read a couple of other books by him. But it's a great vehicle for seeing the countryside, as it were. And that element, the lovely writing, was what kept me going. So Lawrence buys a cottage in a village, which he then has to restore. He's modifying the house. And that's when I got a few issues with it. Lawrence became involved in the politics of Cyprus, which through Enosis or EOKA ended in the Cypriots being brought, drawn into a terrorism in order to achieve freedom from England, I think. I don't know that much about politics and history of Cyprus, only that it's divided between the Turkish side and the Greek side, and that is covered in this book. There isn't really enough background information to follow the politics. And what he says about the politics, from what I gather from other people on Goodreads, is enough to annoy people who actually are from the region or do know more about it. I've got no judgment on that. I, I can't really say. I think what they were aiming for was to become subjects of Greece instead of England. Self-government never seems to be mentioned, though. Um, I'm really not sure what led to Cyprus being divided as it was when I visited it in the 80s. I think there were Tur Greek and Turkish sides, I know that, and I think it comes from something that happened in the Second World War. The division of what probably, prob what probably were once a single pe purse people into two opposing sides sounds a bit sad. Now, because I'm not really up to date with Cyprus history, Lawrence's descriptions, while sensitive and non-accusatory, kind of fly over my head. The only moral of the story I can draw out of it is that wherever Britain tried to empire build, they screwed up in one way or another due to self-satisfied blindness. A blindness that Lawrence does have a little bit, but though I didn't think it was too bad. Uh, revolution in Indi India much? I know that the Durrells originally hailed from India. The never-ending troubles in the Middle East today, largely caused by rural Britannica's meddling. So, with Cyprus, I just couldn't follow all of it. Right at the end, it redeems itself. I thought the ending was brilliant, sad and brilliant, but definitely brilliant. 
I'm happy I read to the end. The story of the Lawrence's last time in this village was pure poetry. And throughout it, it is pretty much pure poetry. It's him and his friends hanging out and drinking wine and talking to villagers. I know some people find it a bit offensive, but I actually really quite enjoyed it. It is the writing, however, that's going to get you through or not. Because a lot of the time you don't really know what's happening. You've got... You've got individual characters, like a small boy passing, saw us leaning over the balcony and explained, every day Ferangos comes back with the cattle like that. That doesn't really... That doesn't really portray it as well, I don't sure. It's a beautiful book. If you can read it without getting upset about the politics behind it, I think it's well worth it. In terms of literature, I think it's not perhaps Lawrence's best, but it's a good one. I like it. Read it too. Tell me what you think. Comment and subscribe and all that stuff.